Good evening, everyone, or, uh, or good afternoon, I guess, in uh, in California, and a good early afternoon in Hawaii. And uh, and I'll say once again, good morning to some of you that are tuning in from uh, all parts of the uh, of the world. Uh, this is Anthony Hitt, and this is After Hours, After Hours Conversation, uh, our episode two. Uh, for a lot of you who tuned in when we did this two weeks ago, uh, you seem to think that this was uh, extremely helpful and uh, pushed us and said, let's do it again. And so we decided we would give it a, a second thought, or a, a second shot. Um, it's been an interesting couple of weeks, and I think uh, we've all been through a lot, uh, probably a lot more than we thought we could even handle at this point in our, our lives. And hopefully something we'll never have to, uh, to deal with again, at least not at this level in, in our lifetimes. Uh, the reason we're doing after hours is, as I said last time, was because there's a lot of uh, opportunities out there for us to learn how to try to manage our business and adapt our business and uh, and to keep our our mindsets right to run our business. And I think our academy has done an amazing job of coaching on that. But but I think what a lot of us need, uh, and we needed it two weeks ago, and we probably need a little bit more now, is some help on how we how we keep our mindsets right, how we uh, you know, mind, body, and soul. And so tonight, uh, very much like we did uh, last time. I've uh, put a, together a mashup of a couple of uh, really fun individuals from very different uh, walks of life and very different perspectives to uh, to join us and to talk about our topic of mind, body, and soul. Um, and uh, before I get into that, I just want to let you know we are on Google Chat. And so if uh, you're watching tonight and you'd like to uh, ask some questions or share some thoughts, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, you can chat me on Google Chat at, at Anthony Hitt. And uh, I will do my best to uh, respond either during our uh, live stream tonight or uh, or afterward. Uh, so with that, let me invite you or uh, welcome uh, invite uh, invite you to meet uh, our <laughs> guest this evening. I'm going to start with uh, one of the good mornings when I was saying good morning earlier. Uh, Rosaria, uh, uh, I'm not. I'm Rosaria. I'm going to let you say it. But Rosaria is a, a longtime friend of, of mine. Uh, I met her. My gosh, it seems like two or three years ago. Uh, when she was about to uh, launch uh, her book, uh, Yellow Goldfish. I'll let her explain the goldfish thing uh, a couple times throughout the evening. But I fell in love with her instantly when I saw her do a, a basically a, a kind of a TED talk uh, about happiness. And then uh, later in the uh, last year, when we did our happiness retreat, uh, we brought uh, Rosari in from Amsterdam, from the Netherlands, excuse me, to help us host our retreat on happiness. And so please welcome uh, from, uh, from the Netherlands, at uh, at uh, about uh, two o'clock in the morning. Thank you so much for getting up, Rosaria. Ch Ch ah, Rosaria. <laughs> yes, just call me Rosaria. I like that more. Thank you, Anthony, for the introduction, and thank you for uh, inviting me to join you at the after hours. I'm, I'm really happy to meet you all again, and also a big hello to all the, um, the Eva folks with, which were with us at the at the Lit retreat. Uh, quickly about me. Uh, right? Shall I go? Yeah, on yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, give them a little. I first of all, would you say your last name correctly, since oh. I completely butchered it? So it's Chirillo, but I, yeah, I'm Chirillo. used to I, it I, in I, every that's what I was thinking. I can yeah. hear it. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting for our audience uh, who maybe who hasn't met you yet, um, uh, or hasn't read uh, your your blog or your or your book, um, to give them a little idea who who you are and and why. Besides, I just think you have all this great energy uh, around you. Oh, I see the stuff from the happiness retreat right behind you on your it's shelf. It's full, it's full, it's full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about chair. who you are. That'd be great. Yes, so I'm, uh, I'm originally Italian. That's why my surname is also so difficult to, to pronounce in international environment. I'm originally Italian, but I've been living in the Netherlands for now 18 years in July. Um, started my career as in customer experience. So I'm originally a customer experience advisor, but I've always been fascinated by happiness. I'm also a mother of two kids, uh, two boys, eight and nine years old. So right oh. now parenting and homeschooling as well. And I have my family in Italy. So it's been a, yeah, quite of an interesting uh, uh, time, uh, also across culture and everything. Um, so that's about me for now, I guess. Okay, well, I'm so glad you're here. And again, I, I was worried that we were gonna get you up in the middle of the night and that your energy level would be decreased. And, and I have to admit, it's, it's down quite a bit from what I'm used to, uh, but, uh, but uh, you're, you're certainly bringing it. And again, thank you so much. And then, and then Mickey, I feel like I should just butcher name, your name just for fairness. But uh, Mickey uh, Bruckner, who is the uh, CEO of a, a, a very uh, 
popular uh, gym in uh, in New Jersey and deals with uh, some pretty impre a pretty impressive list of, uh, of clientele, including some uh, world class athletes. And uh, so, Mickey, I'll let you introduce yourself. Did I get your name halfway correct? Yes, you got it. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Thank you, uh, thank you, Anthony, for the uh, opportunity to be here. Uh, thrilled to be able to talk to you guys. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm an ex collegiate athlete who had some injuries and turned into an entrepreneur at a young age of 24. Um, I move. I grew up in the area, but I moved back here and started my business back in 2006. Um, it's a brick and mortar business. I have two training facilities in New Jersey, and we work with athletes as high as you know Super Bowl champions, uh, Cy Young winners, all the way down to youth athletes, parents, my mothers, fathers, people like myself and you guys. Um, you know, I've had the great opportunity to work with some really high level athletes and learn a lot from them, both on like a physical, mind, mechanical standpoint, but also you know. They're successful people, just like successful people in in uh, the business world. So that the uh, the principles are pretty universal. So you know, I'm um, I, I've learned a lot from them working with them. But you know, other than being a business owner, I'm father, uh, husband. I have three children, uh, twin seven year old girls, and a two year old boy, who we've uh, that we've been potty training through this whole uh, uh, quarantine. So he's so you're, you're homeschooling and potty training. Homeschooling and potty training. So I would say the potty training is going much better than the homeschooling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Uh, well, again, I think their audience can already see uh, why I've invited both of you to be part of this matchup. Uh, as we're looking at mind, mind, body, and soul, uh, I think we're going to have an interesting conversation. I will let our audience know this is a conversation. Uh, other than a brief uh, a little get-together about uh, 20 minutes ago, uh, the three of us have never actually had a conversation together. And, and that's part of the, 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 the idea of this is that you really just get to kind of eavesdrop on a, on a conversation uh, that, that we're having. And, uh, and I'm just going to kind of set the, the, the idea uh, or the, 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 I guess the, the question of the evening. Um, you know, I, we, t we hear about the fact that we're all in isolation and, uh, and, and there's that physical isolation where we're not in, in physical contact with anybody other than those people who are, are closest to us or share the same residences. And, uh, and there's no doubt that that creates a lot of challenges. Uh, we're not moving as much as we used to. There's a lot of things that that creates. And, and I think we, we, we think of those immediately. We might not be dealing with them extremely well, and we'll kind of get to that tonight. But there's also uh, what, what I'm calling an emotional uh, isolation as well. Because there's a, when, you're, when you're not out doing the things you do and interacting with people the way you're, you're used to uh, interacting with people, uh, that also creates a lot of stress. Uh, and then again, if you watch the news for more than about three minutes a day, um, you're, you're, no matter how um, balanced you might think you are mentally, uh, the fact is there is an anxiety that starts to come over you if you, if you let yourself go down that road. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I think that might be an interesting way to start our conversation, Rosaria, because again, you're a happiness expert. You've trained on happiness. Happiness is your subject. That's why we invited you. Uh, that's why you and I got to know each other. Uh, I'm not even sure happiness is my goal right now. Um, not being depressed, <laughs> uh, not being sad is, is kind of where my goal is. So can you kind of, let's just kind of jump into that. Is that, is that normal uh, right now? And, and, uh, and are you even, you know, you're an expert on this. What are you, do, what, what are your thoughts on this idea? Yeah, so it's so first of all, it's also how do we identify and how we, we define happiness. You know, we always think that happiness is just about, yeah, joyful all the time. Happiness, also how I define it, it's really about whole being. So it's about your entire well-being. And that also means accepting all of the emotion and being able to acknowledge, accept those emotion and handle those emotion. Uh, and yes, speaking to the isolation, there is also like, you know, what you also experience is that uh, happiness is also a chemical reaction. And what we had is that in the first few weeks, we all started to get, oh, uh, almost in a fight or flight uh, mode where we are going to get through this and there is also the uh, excitement at the beginning of finding new ways of meeting our needs. Uh, and when that happens, the chemical releases chemicals. And one of our main chemicals of happiness is the dopamine. So we had that over the first few weeks and we feel all energized, but then suddenly we keep having all of the other emotions and the challenges of the days uh, and being home and all the time with the kids 24 seven without having any uh, commuting or remote time or self care time. And then suddenly 
it, it really implodes. So then happiness becomes also about taking care of your own self and all the elements that contribute to your happiness. And by doing that, help also your mental health and therefore not getting depressed. Okay, so now I'm gonna ask you, uh, th this maybe seems like a silly question. Can you be happy and anxious or happy and depressed at the same time? I love the question, and it's like and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to bring in something which actually even myself I only learned in the past few months, and it's also a different way of approaching life. Like the questions of "Am I happy or am I sad right now? Is it this or is it that?" It's actually a question that we pose when we think with our mind. Our mind thinks in terms of opposites, but if we move from our mind to our heart our heart instead is able to handle opposite and it doesn't think in terms of or but in terms of and and i think this is a critical one for this moment in this moment we need to embrace the end i am grateful that i'm spending a lot of time with my kids at home and i'm getting extremely frustrated and i am getting really sad when they start arguing with each other and i crash when i don't know how to handle their conflicts so, and then we are happy when we go on the trampoline. So there is a lot of uh, coexistence of feelings. So yes, you can have both. You, you, can, you can be both then, because I, I feel that I'm generally a pretty happy person. And, uh, and again, I, I like to think that I'm, again, I'm not sure what the right term is, but level-headed. But again, over the last few weeks, it's definitely something that, that's, uh, uh, you know, again, you can't not, go through this experience and and not have a little anxiety a little a little concern be a little fear and uh, we talked about fear a lot a lot last week when you're getting on the trampoline is that dopamine that you're releasing when you're when you're being physical like that yeah it's both but it's also like endorphins and and because we are laughing and then with the kids we're also taking some hugging then it's also oxytocin so at the end it's a lot of very good chemicals that circulate for your body you're also so also you mentioned anxiety. Anxiety, when, when we feel anxiety, we start worrying, our body releases cortisol, which automatically it's one of the chemicals which makes us feel fear and get into a fight or flight mode. When I'm on the trampoline, because I don't know how to be on a trampoline, I have to be completely focused on jumping and not falling. That means that in that moment, I cannot think about anything else. So my brain, it's completely focused on the task at hand, and then I go like almost what we would also call a state of flow when you stop worrying. And that gives my body also the chance of rest and recharge. And well, then being able for the next element of the day. Well, this seems like other than I'm just for a moment, I'm just trying to picture you in, in the Netherlands outside of your, your beautiful home there, uh, jumping up and down on the trampoline. I've just got a whole image right now, all dressed in, in, uh, in, uh, in sunshine yellow. Uh, well, let's. I, I think that brings us over to to you, um, uh, Mickey. Uh, obviously, movement is a, is a part of staying uh, re relieving stress and and, uh, uh, and 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 well, again, relieving stress and anxiety and all of that. And uh, you're you're. Uh, I think something you mentioned there when you started, but I think this is very important. You know, you're a, you're a small business owner that deals with clients uh, like like most of us on this call who are real estate professionals, and uh, your business is not deemed essential. And so by the, the state of New Jersey's uh, shut you down. So you're, you're out of business right now. That, that creates, a, and I'm not trying to say what you don't already know, but that creates a, a lot of stress. Uh, so how does the physical activity uh, tie into all of that for, for, uh, for you? What, what are you uh, seeing? What kind of uh, thoughts would you share? Well, I think um, physically speaking, I think it's, it, it's important for us as human beings. Like we're, we're genetically wired to, to move and, and and be active and when we take that element of our you know our, our genetics away it, it challenges all of our other you know biomechanical strategies so you know our, our mental state our physical state our our you know emotional state like all those things get affected um fitness is kind of the first domino with all that stuff so if you can if you can be consistent with those efforts you start to see the compounding effects in all other facets of your life um i know most people the reason why fitness is so important is because it it builds a hedge against sickness and, and, and all those types of things. It builds a hedge against, you know, what kind of what we're facing right now. Um, but it allows us to, 
create good biomechanical uh, advantages so that we can cope with stresses like this. So, And, and I know from, from me personally, uh, and we were talking about this uh, last week, Mickey, um, yeah, I, uh, I typically work out with a trainer a couple times a week. I typically go for a, a bike ride on the weekend and, and, uh, and then uh, run or walk uh, you know, most days wherever I'm at in, in the world. And, and so for me, I, all of those things stopped. Um, now, did they have to stop 100%? No, but they did. And so that actually created a, a, a level of stress for me pretty quickly because I noticed uh, within just a few days uh, that things were not going as well. And, uh, and for a week or almost two weeks, did not leave the inside, did not go outside. And, uh, and I think I was telling you, my commute now from my office is about you know, 15 steps. So uh, I actually started creating a lot of stress wrapped around the fact that I wasn't moving um with, without any question but also that i was losing what i had built up but like you said this this is really important for us now because not only is it important from a a mind and 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 soul standpoint that we take care of ourselves uh the idea is with everything going on it's also our hedge against uh getting sick or getting healthier faster if we do get sick yeah and i i might add that you know in the last several weeks i've had a lot of conversations with you know, athletes and and just general fitness clients who who are dealing with the same thing. And I think, you know, I think this is not. A, I think people need to understand that this is not the time where we're going to be building a huge, robust, uh, you know, athlete or huge, robust, you know, individual in terms of health and fitness. You know, this is an opportunity for us to maintain what we've developed if we've been training on a consistent basis, and just have that understanding that you know, do what you can with the resources you have. Because then, you know, you don't you don't want to create more anxiety in a way that's going to deter you from going and training. You know, if, if, if normally you're used to going to the gym three times a week and lifting weights and doing resistance training and you don't have those resources, it doesn't mean you can't train. And I think the biggest thing that I think that would be a good takeaway for people is that during this time of stress, super high intensity um, interval type training is probably not the best idea for people to be to be participating in because it you know those types of you know neuromuscular responses it's a very sympathetic response mm. but i think an opportunity for somebody to go out and walk and get in some sunlight or just do something you know very simple that's slow and steady and and very low threshold is going to give them an opportunity to access the parasympathetic nervous system which is going to be more in terms it's going to help them uh deal with stress a little bit better. It's going to help, you know, alleviate some of those stress and, and um, uh, responses that the body has that, you know, research shows that a chronic exposure to some of those things is not good for our, our overall health. So, you know, sure, I think if I haven't been doing my Tony Horton's P90, uh, uh, P, P, what is it, P90X or whatever you, I used to do this like 10 years ago. I shouldn't go out tomorrow because I want to get back in shape or stay in shape and, uh, and break out the P90X. Yeah, I think you need to be smart about it. I think this is not the time to uh, to jump into something super strenuous and outside of your comfort zone. I think we should try to do something, but uh, you know, at the same time, don't don't go outside of what your your general capabilities are. So, by the way, uh, Mickey, uh, 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 oh, Mayla Gibson from our shop in Honolulu. Uh, um, I guess she's singing, she's singing at your wedding. She's on, by the way. Yeah. Wow. Small world. <laughs> Uh, aloha, <laughs> uh, Rosaria. I saw you nodding your head and like you wanted to add something to what he was saying. You want to continue on the thought? Yeah, because actually it's interesting. Also, that you mentioned the parasympathetic system and doing type of exercise which doesn't uh, uh, create more stress. Because one thing that is very important to understand also about stress is that it's not so much stress the problem for our body, but the lack of recovery. So, and right now we are experiencing a lot of stress. So an anxiety, what we need to build in is recovery. So some strategy would be to have many more break uh, during the day so that you give the time to the parasympathetic system to activate and provide the chance for your body to recover and to rest. And a simple work is just enough. It's enough for your body to move. And if you work, for example, one of my strategies to work listening to a meditation which has also some soothing music that automatically uh yeah provides calm and it brings all that uh high intensity status or or uh 
thinking mode to the heart. That's interesting because you just said something. So you're saying it's even more important that we take breaks, uh, whether it's working out or, or just working uh, at home, that we need to take more breaks during the day than we might yeah. in, the, in the normal. In the normal, because I was saying, uh, I, I said this to several people. When this all started, I thought, well, I'm going to be at home. Uh, I, I don't have a commute time. I'm not going to have travel time. I'm going to have all this extra free time. And, and that is not what has happened uh, for me in any way whatsoever. I'm working more hours, and I would actually argue maybe more dense hours because I'm just packing everything in, and I, and I don't get up and walk around the office. I don't get up and – I barely get up and leave my, my, my uh, you know, five-foot circle here. Um, and, and if I'm understanding you right, you're saying it's even more important right now that I get up a few times, maybe once an hour and, and, and stretch and move and meditate or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Because what we, what we don't realize is that in our normal routine, there are a lot of things built in which actually allow us for that recovery. That commuting time, being in the car sometimes for who goes in the car, that is recovery time. We, it just, uh, una we are unaware. We do it unconsciously. We have to do it. Now that we are not commuting anymore, we lose that time. And I actually, I experienced what you are mentioning when I started to be a freelance. Because before I used to go to the office every day and I commuted. And then suddenly I was working most of the time from home, unless going out to meeting clients. And then I started to realize, oh, wait a second, I'm missing that time from the office to come back home. It also allows you to change the mind from the office space to the home space. And now instead, you close your emails the last moment, and then you go down or you go just to the other room where there is your partner, your kids, everybody with all their elements. Or for me right now, I even share my office with my two kids. So we're actually all the time together. So if we don't build in those break time, it's just, yeah, then we, we without noticing it, we get to saturation point, and then we explode. If we build no. in those time uh, along the road, uh, then we, we, yeah, we recover. Well, that, that makes sense because I mean, I'm sure Mickey would tell us it's not a good idea to do a high intensity workout for, for 10 hours a day. And I guess that's what we're doing now is a lot of us are doing high intensity work for, uh, you know, 10 or 12 hours a day and multitasking because we're not only doing our, our work, but we are potty training and, and, uh, and, and homeschooling and, and maybe getting to know our spouse again that we haven't met for, uh, you know, a couple of years or, and that's a lot, a lot going on at uh, as, as high intensity. Um, Mickey, you've got a lot of clients, obviously, that I'm going to try to get names out of you tonight, I promise. I know Eli Manning is one of them, so I, I know that. But uh, uh, these are people who are used to a, 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 a serious routine when it comes to to working out and, uh, and working out with great equipment and great people. And uh, and their goals, uh, obviously, are, are, are even more. Uh, that's their business. That's their life. Uh, can you give us any uh, any thoughts or any uh, uh, any stories wrapped around how they're kind of dealing with this right now? Because that's again, their 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 body is their work. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, any thoughts? Yeah, well, I've got you know I've got some professional baseball athletes who were you know down in spring training who had to basically drop everything and come back home and and kind of lay in in isolation. You know, one of them is. is you know, is, is coming and, and training with me at my barn on a, you know, a couple of days a week basis. And, and, you know, we had a chance to speak today and he's, he's a pitcher for the New York Mets and he, yeah, he, he didn't know if they're going to have a season. So a lot of, a lot of what these athletes, you know, anybody who works on a consistent basis has goals in mind, you know, they're working towards certain things and, and, and hitting certain, you know, performance metrics and, and the things that they're getting measured in their arena. But, Without those things, you kind of remove the motivation and, and the desire to, to to do all these things. So it's almost where you know you kind of have to reshift your focus in terms of why you're doing things and how you're managing your time and and that that level of of commitment is is truly being tested right now for a lot of people. Um, but I think the challenge is is you know like you said, most of these guys uh, and gals they're they're privy to some of the best resources possible, both on a personnel standpoint. On a uh, uh, on a facility standpoint, and and they're really you know some of these guys I, I've speak, spoken to are in Arizona who are living in a small apartment uh, because they're waiting for spring training to come back on, and and you know these guys when they when the light switch comes back on they got to go out and compete again. So it's it's a bit of a challenge, 
but I think also the, the challenge for these guys is they don't know what's going to happen. You know, they don't know if they're going to have a season, if they're not going to have a season. Uh, an interesting conversation I had today with, with uh, my athlete, Rick Porcello, is that he goes, what do you think about us playing uh, a season with no fans in the stands? And, you know, I would, and I, and I said to him, like, I don't, I don't think that's going to be as big of an adjustment for the fans because they'll have baseball on TV and they'll have their, their, uh, chance to forget about everything that's going on. But how are you guys going to respond? You know, because you feed off of that. You're right. That is like, you know what he's, he's been this, he's going into his 12th year in the big leagues. Uh, he's won a world series. He's won a Cy Young. And I've, I've known him since I've trained him since he was 18. And he said, you know, now this part of my career, that's like the lights going on and the people in the stands, that's why I play. And, you know, so I think our routines are even more important now. It's just, it's a different routine. Like myself included, I had, a, you know, over so many years, I developed a long routine and it's now it's been flipped upside down because I have no, I have, it's, there's so much gray area in my day between homeschooling and, and working on my business and doing what I can from a remote standpoint. Uh, you know, I used to be able to go to my facility and coach and do all the things I need to do. And I would come home and I would put all my stuff away and I would be a father, right? So I had my, my, my spaces where I could have my roles, but now there's a blending of everything. And it's that to me is my biggest challenge is trying to um, redo all of my routines that I've spent so many years developing. So, well, that's interesting because I, uh, routines is one of the things I want to talk about. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a checklist guy. I'm a routine guy. I like everything to work the way it works. Uh, when I started traveling so much, you know, for me, that was a whole new uh, world because I couldn't have my my normal routines and uh, but I learned how to create new routines that are now my travel routines mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna guess that a lot of your athletes are also very routine driven and so they're they're for me uh, uh, Well, you're, you have to kind of mourn I guess I guess the routine that you're used to working on For a lot of all of us your, your clients. You've made a good example of it We don't know what tomorrow is going to look like. We don't know what our business is going to look like in in a week or three weeks or, or, or even three months, uh, but we have to keep on going. So how do you how do you talk to your athletes about creating that new routine? Because if they're used to working out with you and your team and, and with all these great resources, and now they're in a small apartment in, in Arizona, I'm gonna guess uh, it's not easy to do a workout that's anything close to what they're used to. Yeah, I mean, my, my perspective is that I think a lot of people, myself included, we get anxious and, and develop anxiety when when we feel like we're not doing a good job of managing the things within our control, right? And I think from from my experience, given that we've been out of we had to shut down our doors about over three weeks ago now, um, you know, I've mainly been trying to focus on the things that are within my scope of control. Any and anything outside of that. Is just going to take me towards a place I don't want to be, and it's just going to take me and create more anxiety, and that's not where I want to be right now, you know, because it's going to affect me in terms of how I'm showing up for my for my employees, my my family, uh, my my members, like all of the people that depend on me. So I need to make sure that you know this is an opportunity for me to really step up as a leader and and create some level of continuity so that that I can perform my task as, as a father, as a husband, as a, you know, all those things. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a challenge because I think everybody is kind of going through the same thing. So I think maybe some of these guys, they take solace in that, but, you know, I think, um, I think my, my biggest thing I tell them is like, look, do what you can do. You know, if, if you have, if these are your resources, I can create something that can work around that. Um, you know, some guys, have have a, have a full gym and some guys don't and some and it's just it's where we're at so you just got to focus on controlling the things within your control do the best you can with the resources you have and that's that's all you can do because everybody else is in the same situation now so um, do you have people actually uh i remember back in the day you know you would have all these different programs if you don't have weights you could fill up gallon jugs or lift gallon jugs of milk or water or for me i think it could be cans of tuna here i've got more cans of tuna in my house than i think i've had my I probably eaten my entire life, but are you are you going down that road? Or are you actually yeah. saying these are the things, or are you are you not going down that kind of a road? Well, we we were kind of fortunate where when we were forced to shut down, 
we essentially said to all of our, our members and our athletes, like, look, we have a gym full of equipment. If you want to come and borrow whatever you need, come by. You tell me, I'll, I'll run by the gym, and you can take some equipment and 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 bring it home and utilize it as, as you see fit. Otherwise, it's just going to collect dust in my facility. So, And then what I'll do is I'll write a program based on what you have, whether it's the equipment you've borrowed from us or even if it's something like a backpack, you load up with some weight, like anything in there. You know, you can squat with that. You can lunge with that. You can load it. You know, there's different ways of loading up movement um, on, a, on a mechanical standpoint. But, you know, like we talked earlier, it's like right now is probably not the time where you're going to be building a, like a, a complete robust energy system and, and, and strength and power development. Like that's not what we want to focus on now. It's like, let's just maintain. Let's do some type of fitness that's going to keep us and allow us to maintain our, our physical standpoint, but also our sanity. So. By the, way, by the way, that that from a marketing standpoint, I know that's not necessarily why you did it, but that's absolutely brilliant. Those clients would probably be with you anyway, but those are the kind of things that when we do, uh, I mean, that's creative, that's smart, and you great great relationships there. Uh, Rosario, I know you're a routine uh, person as well, and you also believe in having routines, but also breaking routines. Yes. Uh, and there's reasons for that. Do you want to? Want to share some uh, thought, thoughts on routines? and yeah, So for me, a lot of routines have also just gone out of the window. Uh, and especially with the two kids, it, it's like at some point I, I made clear for myself that is going to be the priority. And whatever I can fit in, it, it's going to go. And what doesn't, doesn't. Uh, and even with the kids, uh, we tried to start with routines at the beginning. Then there were changes of plan from the school. And this week, actually, all the previous routine also changed. So also there, I think what is uh, critical is to let go of the expectations and to really know that at this point, also it's very important to stop comparing. I think one thing that has also gone a lot uh, around on social media is about making the most out of this time and doing this and make sure that you read this and, and fit in also this extra time. And that just puts a lot more pressure. So for me, I really switched from making the most out of things to just making the best out of it and really do what we can do and the priority on being and i also reframed a lot from routines to rituals so i can't say that i have any more a, a kind of routine like at nine i'm doing this at 10 i'm doing this at 11 i'm doing this but i have about like 10 key rituals that i do during the day which i build it in consciously because are also things that i want to continue to do when this is over so an example, for example, is in the morning, I wake up and the first thing I do before going downstairs to meet my family and everybody, I take some time outside the balcony to look at sunrise, which is now those days about at 7 a.m. when I'm standing up. So, and then I do some stretching while looking at the sunrise. That gives me time to get into myself, also get fresh air and do stretching. And then the next one, it's about having a healthy breakfast. And I try to skip the news and trying to do, again, an uplifting podcast. But sometimes I will fall and check the numbers. And then I also tell to myself, and that's okay too. It's, you know, I, I, I'm trying to resist it, but sometimes I do want to know the numbers. And then I just make sure that I compensate it with something that is uplifting. Oh, that's uh, really interesting. Uh, I, I got several points here. Uh, like what you think, instead of making the the most, making the best. I thought that was interesting. That kind of sounds to what Mickey was saying. Now is not the time to be trying to 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 build or go to the next level. It's about maintaining. That's yeah. kind of the same concept. There is making the best of the situation versus the most. I also heard both of you talk about the idea, and, and this was a theme last uh, last time too. Uh, you know, focus on the things you can control. Uh, it's kind of we. I think I actually used the Serenity Prayer last year. You know. Help, help me you know, uh, focus on the things I can control and let go of the things I can't. And I think that's uh, extremely important. Mickey, you were, you were and, saying that. But, and but go giving ahead. the wisdom and, you, and on that one, and give, him, give us the wisdom to know the difference between yeah, exactly. the things we can control and the things we cannot control. And, and I think that's something we all need to be doing right now is realizing we can't control it. But, but something else you just gave me, which is interesting, because I'm, I'm also, you know, I look at the numbers and uh, I was looking at the numbers 10 times a day. And now I look at the numbers once a day. But, and you're not saying that that's necessarily bad. I don't know that the numbers really mean anything to me, but I, I so it really does create some anxiety. 
But if for some reason I feel like I need to know that, you're saying now I need to balance that with something to, so I, I need to know that that's going to create a, a stress or an anxiety. And then actually now found a counteract or a counteract. Yeah. Right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so, and I don't do it in two ways. It's also because for your brain, at the end, looking at those numbers sometimes can raise anxiety. So if you yes. do something else that immediately release that anxiety, then you give the break to, you break again the pattern of creating cortisol. It's the same a bit that I've been doing even with my post. So at the beginning, I was really looking into the numbers. I even felt a responsibility that I had to shut, uh, shut up. Uh, so shut up, well, like raise my voice to the Netherlands. Yeah that we needed to stay home because I was really seeing the difference between the Italian approach and the Dutch approach. And then when suddenly things started to go, like the school closed, then I also felt, you know, now I can relax. They are taking actions. I don't have to post about the numbers all the time to make people aware. And also uh, when posting on Facebook, I really um, then started to choose to balance it out with a positive post. So. I created also those intuitive paintings uh, images, with each with a quote inspired by the paintings. And for example, that is now something that I'm doing consciously every day. I call it my daily wow now because it's word of wisdom nurturing our world, as well as the name of my company. Um, I never knew that. That's what wow now stands for. No, it's not what that stands for. But that's what I made it when I when I made the booklet. I, I, like, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Okay. When I made the booklet for my friends, I called it Rossi Wow Now. And I made it like words of wisdom, nurturing. Actually, at the beginning, it was nurturing outstanding women because it wasn't for my friends. Right. Then it became nurturing outstanding wowers because it became for my clients. And now that I published it a few weeks ago, it became just nurturing our world uh, because that also became, and that also became my way of contributing. So another thing that I noticed that happened to myself is while most of my uh, counterparts and colleagues, all the other CX advisors, all step in to do something on CX for me or doing free webinar. For me, I felt I want to contribute on the happiness and with words of wisdom. I won't be doing webinar. This is the, the first actually uh, broadcast that I do with you in this entire period. But up until now, I was more thinking, I, I feel like I can contribute with my paintings and with those quotes. So for each of us, it's also important to think in this period, where is that we are compelled to contribute, that we have the energy and the passion to contribute, and we don't have to do it all. Uh, another example is with my kids. I felt they were really missing contacts with their schoolmates. And what I set up for them was to manage Zoom calls with all of their schoolmates once a day. That felt like this is where I can contribute now. But a lot of other stuff, if not everything else, I dropped. Somebody else can take it up and can think about that. And some other parents will think of something else. So it's really, yeah, really pick your battle, pick where you can really focus on um, and both contribute and give yourself a good feeling. Um, uh, Magnus, I will, I will tell you offline. So uh, I'm getting a few questions coming in. I'm going to go uh, to Mickey. I mean, Obviously, you train you know, some of the, the celebrity athletes that we all know. We've gotten a couple names out of you so far. And, uh, and I'm coming to you with this in just a second, Rosaria, too, because you're an expert in, in this field. But, uh, you know, Mickey, I, I also mentioned earlier that you're, you mentioned that you're a father and potty training and, and homeschooling. And uh, you're used to getting out and going to the, your, your gyms and running those businesses and being with those clients. Uh, I'm assuming you take good care of yourself, too. But your routines have changed. Are you practicing what you what you teach right now? Are you how are you how are you dealing with all this? Because you're dealing with a lot of the same stressors we are from a business standpoint as well. Yeah, uh, on a personal standpoint, in terms of my own personal health and fitness, uh, it's been a challenge just because I think there's so much gray area in my day. Or normally, I could compartmentalize where certain periods of the day generally is when I would always train. I, you know, I would. Train athletes and clients in the morning. I would train in the middle of the day, and then I train more athletes and clients in the afternoon. And I and I go home and and fulfill my role as a father and husband. But um, it's there's it's it's just too much going on. There's there's a lot of muddling of uh, of time and 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 efforts and things now. So you know, I'd say I, I'm I'm training about three times a week. Um, my training sessions aren't as long, and they're not as intense. But I'm doing other things, you know, my fortunately, uh, 
my family and I, we just moved in the beginning of the year and we have, we, we live on, you know, a bit of a, like a farm with three acres and kids go out and run. Like today they were out in bare feet, getting muddy and being kids awesome. and doing things that, you know, they might not have been able to do if they were at school. And, you know, I'm spending more time with them than I have in a long time. And, um, you know, so there's our, there are some silver linings to all this, but I think my biggest thing as a, you know, for my personal health, it's, it's been a challenge, you know, fulfilling a lot of those things just because there's so many competing demands right now. Um, on a, you know, as, as an entrepreneur, you know, there's, there's things that I'm trying to integrate into running my business that I never had to do before, you know, so it's a good thing because it's forcing me to, um, expand my reach, expand my, what I'm offering and how I'm in, integrating uh, different ways of, of working with people. But it's also gotten far away from what I built my business upon. You know, I'm a brick and mortar business that, that, that relies on social interaction and personal interface um, with my clients and my athletes. And, you know, so I, I don't have that luxury now. So we've done Zoom calls, we've done, um, <clears throat> you know, just phone calls and emails and things like that. And we're doing our best uh, in order to communicate given the resources we have. But I think for me, that's the biggest challenge is that, you know, I've built a business on a certain way of, of running a business. And, you know, it, 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 on an emotional standpoint, it's challenging because I, I, I don't have that interaction on a day-to-day -day basis with my team, with the people that I see on a regular weekly basis. Um, and it's, but it's also forced me to level up and, improve upon my communication as a leader, um, both as like a, a, you know, running my facilities and also managing uh, my clients and athletes. So, you know, I think <clears throat> there's some good aspects to it. It's certainly challenging because I'm doing things that are completely outside of my comfort zone. But I think when the dust settles, this gives me an opportunity to further bolster my business and, and create something that I never had to do before. So, you know, there's, 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 interesting components to it so you it was so good to hear both pieces of what you just said because on one side we heard you know mickey bruckner this uh, amazing trainer and athlete and and all that is also having challenges building his physical routine and doing the things that that he wants to do and and i think that honesty is really important for us all to understand uh that that uh you know, these are challenges for you as well but i love the silver lining side of that that you're able to recognize and while I may not be you know, doing what I would normally do or as, as much as I would normally do that I'm maintaining or trying to maintain, but even if I don't maintain at that same level that I'm not that I'm using it as an excuse, but I'm a little okay with that because my trade off right now is I'm getting to run barefoot and get muddy with my, my kids and, and, and do all these other things. And also that you're learning new things and out of your comfort zones that will actually make you even stronger when you, when you come out of this, do you think, uh, you will be better at what you do when this is over than you were before. Will the experience of this, is it going to improve you in some way? Will you look at things differently? Yes. I, I think my biggest thing <clears throat> is improving my ability to, to communicate with our members and communicate in ways that I used to rely on heavily. Again, that personal face-to-face. -face. I've always, um, I'm, I'm very much involved in the day-to-day -day operations and interfacing with our people. And that's something that, you know, we, 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 we call it, we're, we're family at, at my training facility. And, and it's something that like we, we support each other. We support each other through this whole period. And I think the challenge is, is again, you know, I'm being forced to operate in ways that, that are outside of my comfort zone. Um, but it's also, I think it's filling a lot of holes that, that needed to be filled in order to continue to evolve and, um, and just become a, a you know a better business all around. So that, that's great. No, and I, I think that's the kind of uh, uh, hope or focus that a lot of us need to look at. Rosaria, I, again, you are this person I've never uh, known you not to be a cheerful, smiling, energetic, uh, happy person. But I know that, like the rest of us, you're dealing with a lot of stresses. You're uh, you're Italian. A lot Absolutely. of your family is in Italy, and we all know the story in Italy. It's it's quite frightening, um, and, uh, and and I know that's something you're paying attention to. Uh, do you do you get anxious? Do you do you have do you have those moments where you're you're having to actually really coach yourself through this? And uh, and are you practicing what you teach? <laughs> 
Uh, so it, it's like it's, I asked you both if I could ask you anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's it's it, it's really really a challenge, and I do do get anxious, and I'm like, and I can get extremely anxious. So I tell you, for me, one of the challenges also right now is that my husband does have to go to work. So he has been staying home the first couple of weeks because he was actually having a, an, uh, a cold, and that was one of the reasons that he stay home. But he needs to be on the in the office because he's responsible for a part of the production. So he has to be physically there. And that for me, it's a major, major trigger point. And there is also a lot of conflicts here from a cultural point of view, because I see a lot of Italian news and I get that type of anxiety from there. While my husband is Dutch, he has full trust in what the Dutch government is saying. The Dutch government is saying, you don't need to wear a mask, you can go out. We do intelligent lockdown. So it's a completely different approach. So also there, there is a lot to handle. And a lot of times I, it does go wrong. So, and even for me, I'm also trying not to put on myself that pressure, like, oh, because I'm the expert on happiness, I need to be happy all the time. That's like a, a road to, to disaster. And you mentioned at the beginning also about the sadness and the depression. I have been sad and I even shared in the past in Bale, I even had moments of depression uh, years ago. And, and the difference between sadness and depression is that uh, depression is sadness without hope. So what I notice I'm doing very different in this period is I have hope. I have hope and I have mm -hmm. trust. And that is keeping me true. So I, and I'm not even wondering whether I'm gonna be better or not afterwards. I'm really well, I'm practicing being in the present. I'm like, if I get through the present in the best way that I can, then I can trust that the future will be fine. Uh, and, and really that is what is holding me right now, being in the present. But it's a challenge. Also with the kids, uh, I noticed this week, I, I flipped more. I really flipped more. And especially this morning where like they were like conflicting and, and killing each other almost. I was like, oh my God, this evening I'm gonna have a webinar where like, I'm gonna talk about how can you go through this period? I'm like, ah! you know, so there is a lot of this going on. We are all learning. Uh, there's one thing I love from Brene Brown. She's calling, I don't know if we can say the F word here, but like she talks about FTT, so the fuck first time. Uh, and it's like we are right now in a collective. What is it with the people I invite? They're always going to drop something that's going to surprise me. So, so I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. So we are right now in a collective F word first time. We are all learning how to do this together. We don't know it. It's it's like, and we can't pretend that we know it because we don't. So it's the first time and we'll just, yeah, have to get through it. <laughs> if you would ask me tonight, who's going to drop the F-bomb on the on the program? Mickey, I don't even know you that well. I would have thought it would have been you. I didn't, I didn't expect it to be Rosaria. So you never know what's going to happen after, after hours. Um, <laughs> it's really after hours. <laughs> I mean, for you, it's really after. That's right. You're, you're three o'clock in the morning. You're, you're allowed to say whatever you want. It's three o'clock in the morning. Uh, Mickey, before we wrap this up, I, I wanted to uh, to talk about because you've had to adapt your business and, and a lot of your clients have said, yeah, I know I can't be there physically, but I need you or your team's support. And so you've actually created a, a, a and I don't want this to sound like an infomercial, but I just think it's really interesting. You've actually created a product uh, that your clients can keep having that interaction and everything. And, uh, and not only for your clients, you've extended that out to, to so new people can get to know you uh, and work with you and your team, uh, even if they're not in New Jersey. Can you share that? Because I just think it's really interesting how, as entrepreneurs, we think at times like this, and we come up with those new ideas and those new ways to do things. And uh, I'm also thinking there's maybe a couple of people on this call that are like, hey, it'd be pretty cool to have uh, you know, Mickey, Mickey uh, uh, coaching me a little bit. So can you tell us about how that works? Yeah. So, you know, obviously we don't have the ability to, to be face to face with people. So we're kind of using the resources we have. Um, I've been doing one on one uh, Zoom calls with with clients and athletes who, who wish to have, you know, more personal interaction and more coaching, you know, and I treat it just like a, a normal training session, um, you know, for 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 new individuals who are new to our system and new to our training protocols. Uh, what we're trying to do is create. Uh, you know, a monthly offering where people can sign up and what's involved is we do a one-on-one -on -one coaching call 
And that's an opportunity, you know, for us to get some context with the individual. What's their training history? What's their injury history? Do they have any movement pathologies? Um, what are their goals? What type of resources do they have for the next couple of weeks? Um, and then from there, we put together a program based on all those variables. And then we follow up with some Zoom calls to kind of coach them through. And so the monthly cost, the first month is a little bit more expensive because there's a little bit more upfront work. And from there, as we build context with the individual, we, we program on a month to month basis because it's something where, you know, hopefully optimistically we could be back to work soon, but, you know, it could be longer. And, and you know, so we're trying to create contingency plans so we can still service people and, and give them high quality training. Uh, but for the most part, it's it's more or less coaching, accountability, weekly check ins, making sure that uh, we're doing the things and interacting with our clients much like we would if we were with them face to face, but now we're doing it, you know, digitally and virtually in, in, in ways that, that we're adapting, so to speak. Um, you know, and um, so it, No, go ahead, I'm sorry. So it's just an opportunity for us to continue to what we normally do and how we operate within our facility, but just doing it on a virtual standpoint, so. The, uh, the, the website is uh, annexsportsperformance.com? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, 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 Meredith, if you can put that URL up there so people can get to know Mickey if they want a little bit more. If uh, So if this is, you said it's a little more expensive the first month, uh, what are we talking? Are we talking, you know, thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars? Or what are we talking to, to have you or someone on your team uh, help keep us uh, and, and tied? Or, or so we can also name drop that, uh, that you help us search. Yeah, it's uh, $389 for the first month. And that gives you the coaching call. It gives you nutritional assessment, kind of base, basically sets you up uh, for success. Uh, and, and then from there, it's uh, 189 a month after that. Uh, and that's basically, again, it's you get our, our accountability check-ins with us on a weekly basis. You get a program based on the resources and equipment you have at, uh, at your exposure. Uh, but you're getting coaching. You're getting programming that's, that's going to keep you safe, moving well, and, 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 and kind of building a good foundation for these next couple of weeks so that when the dust settles and you want to get back to something in training, you've had a good foundation built. Um, you know, we want to meet you guys where you are. We want to make sure that, and that's the whole purpose of the first initial calls. You know, if you're somebody who's been training for years and has a pretty good uh, a, a training proficiency, then you, your program is going to look a lot different than somebody who hasn't been training for that long. So, you know, that's, that's kind of our opportunity to, to meet you guys where you are and give you something that's going to keep you safe and, and move you along towards your goals and in terms of your health and fitness. So, Well, I, I want to do something, Mickey, because uh, I really appreciate you volunteering and doing this tonight. Um, I'm a, I used to host a radio show a long time ago in a, in a different life. And uh, the, the, the station was at 108 on the dial. So that tells you a little bit about where it was at. But we would do a lot of these things where if you were the 108th caller, you would you would get something. So as my personal gift, this is not something you're doing or something that uh, that uh, Angela Bokers is doing. But to the the 108th person, uh, <laughs> now let's come with another. What's your what's your lucky number, Mickey? Give me a number. Uh, seven. Number seven. The seventh person who uh, that sends me a chat at Anthony Hit and says I would like to uh, to train with Mickey. Uh, I will personally pick up the tab for their first month just to uh, just to get them going. So. Uh, if you're interested in uh, in having a, a a planning session and maybe a little accountability from uh, from Mickey, uh, send me a chat and number seven, uh, we will uh, we'll I'll pick up the cost for you on that. Uh, Rosaria, you uh, you have a great blog, and uh, this is like the, the selling part of the, the program here. But uh, you did a really good post uh, about all of these these free things that are out there right now that are uh, extremely uh, uh, valuable for us and things that we can do and learn and 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 uh, uh, nourish ourselves. Uh, can you uh, tell us a bit some of those things that you think are things that we might want to do? And I know goldfish is is one of those. Yeah. So there are a couple of things. I mean, it's a really what I put together is a blog with all free resources, which are there to nurture the body, the mind, and the soul. Um, most of them are in English. There is only yoga and qigong, which are actually what I do with my uh, my club. They also, within 24 hours, they put everything online, but that's in Dutch. But then you, I'm sure you have equivalents also in uh, in US that you can follow. And what you also have there are a couple of my books as well, 
Um, so, uh, and actually one of them, I didn't, I didn't mention at the beginning, but that's the reason why we also met. It's yellow goldfish, which is about happiness. It's about nine ways that um, companies can contribute to happiness for their customers, their employees and society. But it's also full with ideas of how people can contribute to their own happiness right now. Uh, and that one, because my co-author Sam Phelps is doing uh, as a, his way to contribute, he has picked 29 days in which every day is making one of the books that is written free. It actually happens to be free on the 8th of April in the US time. So as of your midnight, you can actually download it for free. And at this very moment, people can download Diamond Goldfish. So you have two books that you can actually... Yeah. Where, where do we go to, where do we go to uh, uh, and let Meredith know here, because then she'll put it up here, but where do we go to uh, to download the free copy uh, before midnight of Diamond Goldfish? Yeah, and then so I guess we go back here tomorrow after midnight and, and get your book for free too. It's on Amazon. So if you go to amazon.com, uh, you have, and I uh, made it, I can send you the two links and you can pop them up. So for both Diamond uh, uh, Goldfish and for Yellow Goldfish. Uh, and also if you go to my website on oneout.eu, you also have the direct links to the various books as well. Okay, so, but we just go on Amazon then right now. So until midnight yeah, tonight, right US, yeah, you, you just can get the free copy of, uh, of the Diamond and after midnight, we can get your copy yes. uh, free of charge. Uh, there were some other things that you were telling me about you thought were very, there. Okay, good. She just uh, put that up there for everybody to see. Uh, uh, there were some other free things that you mentioned that I thought would be very interesting to share. Uh, so the other one that is very interesting is what Deepak Chopra is doing. So they is offering a 21 days uh, experience meditation. They do those randomly throughout the year. This is going on right now. And it's uh, um, also without uh, without limit of days. So you can go right now on the Deepak Chopra uh, uh, meditation app and it's 21 days meditation experience on the topic of hope during uncertain times. So that is also a one at this moment. That, uh, that, sounds, uh, that sounds great. By the way, um, I meant to mention this last week and, I, and I've just signed up for it. Uh, Yale, and you've said there's other places doing this as well, but Yale has a, a very popular course about... Um, uh, about happiness. Uh, that's I think that's what it's called. Uh, but they're also offering this course free of charge right now, uh, which is about uh, uh, Meredith. If you could also share that link uh, uh, to how you can sign up for this free Yale uh, course on uh, on uh, uh, personal. Um, uh, my gosh, I'm I'm losing my train of thought tonight. But basically, on on your own happiness and and taking care of yourself. Uh, I'm going to share that link with you as well because I think that's another another good. Uh, Another good freebie out there. Uh, as we, there it is. It's a uh, uh, science of well-being. Thank you. The science of well-being, a free course from Yale that you can take online uh, during this time. And so uh, I highly recommend that you take a look at that. I've uh, I uh, downloaded it or signed up for it a week ago, and I think it starts here uh, in in a couple of days, or, or hope I, maybe it's already started. Uh, before we wrap this up, uh, Mickey, any any final thoughts that you would like to share uh, as taking away? Uh, you know, I think the, the biggest thing I would say is just do, do, uh, do whatever you can on a day-to-day -day basis to try to, you know, keep yourself moving and, and, and stay motivated, uh, and just, but also knowing that, you know, give yourself some break and, and realize that this is a very challenging time to navigate, you know, both as individuals in a, you know, professional standpoint, as a relationship and emotional standpoint, you know, we're all, we're all kind of struggling because we're, we're all, you know, going through, periods of the unknown. This is something that none of us have ever really dealt with. And, you know, so obviously, you know, there's got to be still some levels of accountability. Um, but at the end of the day, we're all human. And, and I think, you know, we, you got to give yourself some slack with, with certain things. So that's, that's my thing is, um, you know, it's, it's a challenge, but we'll get through it. And, and I think support your, your, the people in your network and do the best you can and show up as a leader and, and, you know, be a, be a good, uh, good role model and a good uh, contributor. You know, this is the time to do it, so. Well, I will, uh, again, thank you so much for being here and doing this tonight. I, I really appreciate that. And uh, Rosaria, uh, can I go ahead and get uh, some final thoughts from you as well? Before we start our, our, our laugh yoga, Sean's already <laughs> on there, but uh, what, uh, some final thoughts from you, uh, Rosaria. 
Yeah, I think I want to give some final thoughts in the following framework, maximize, minimize, prioritize, and maximize, really maximize the things that make you happy and that they provide you a dose of chemicals. So the key chemicals of dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphin. We didn't get to touch much on this one tonight, but for who loves yellow gold fish, there's gonna be a lot on, on this there. And we will have as a final exercise one that will provide us those, uh, uh, those uh, uh, chemicals. The second thing is minimize anxiety and stress and prioritize your self-care. It's uh, really, really important right now that we take time during the day to really do self-care and self-compassion and really take the time to, to recharge. I think that's the, the critical one that is really important in those days. I think those are great thoughts. Again, thank you so much. And uh, I, I, uh, I, uh, I'm picking up the tab. By the way, Sean, who was it that uh, was number seven? Uh, Taylor Jenkins from... Taylor uh, Jenkins from Kansas, Kansas City. City. Taylor Jenkins, uh, so we'll get that all set up. And uh, Rosaria, uh, if you will, uh, either online now or offline, let me know. Uh, for, since you got up in the middle of the night to do this, I would like to donate uh, $400 to a, a charity or something that's important to you as well. I really appreciate you doing this. It, it's great to have uh, uh, such uh, you know, competent and, and passionate uh, people, experts that are willing to share uh, their time so generously and, uh, and, uh, and, and their knowledge and their insights. Uh, and it's, uh, I can tell you right now that uh, you know, I've got, a, again, just like last week, a ton of responses from people who are uh, very grateful for the wisdom that both of you have shared tonight. Meredith, I'm going to ask you to, to turn on your camera too. I know you weren't expecting that <laughs> because we're going to wrap. Last week, we did a meditation at the end and, uh, and Rosaria, oh, uh, um, you changed your shirt since I've seen you last, Meredith. <laughs> I did. And I just want to let everyone know I have been posting all of the links available on our EV America's Facebook page. So you can go there and get them as well. So all of Mickey's information and all of Rosaria's information. Okay. So with that, Rosaria, you have a little uh, a little yoga. I think you want to. I, I, I just realized I put myself into an FFT if I fucking first time again because I, <laughs> I, I have I, never done it all my life with uh, like uh, about 2,000 people. There's only 1,000 people watching. No big deal. Let's do something <laughs> you've never done before. Um, uh, so, so, what is that? Tell us about this uh, social distancing uh, laughter yoga, I think is what you're, what you're what planning. And by the way, talking about three things, in my um, list of things in the blog post, you will find there is one company called Brand Love. They do it weekly. Every Wednesday, you can uh, plug in. It's do, it's free. And they do laughter yoga. Laughter yoga, it's a form of yoga which is about laughing. So it helps you to get in the flow. <laughs> Sorry, Mickey, we, you, you got into this. Uh, you can thank Caitlin later on for getting you into this, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> when we laugh, like there are over like uh, hundreds of muscles in our face that go with the laugh, so that really release the tension. And at the same time, we produce endorphin, which is one of our happy chemicals. Uh, and we release also dopamine because we do something. And now that we do it together, we release also oxytocin because we're going to trust each other. So what I'm going to do, click, I'm going to click, click. walk you through. Oh, it's clicking, clicking. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so I'm going to walk you through a few things that we're going to do, and we're going to laugh together. So the first thing. So by the way, if you're at home, we can't see you and we can't hear you, but I'd like to think you're going to do exactly this with us because I, I think it's going to make us all enjoy the moment. And if not, laugh with us. Just looking at us laugh is going to be fun, but go ahead. <laughs> So, and if you're home and you have more people around you keeping the, the distances uh, advised by your government, you can take your two fingers and put them on the shoulder of the person next to you. And if you don't have a person next to you, we do it visually. We just visualize. We visualize because touch is also what allows us to get oxytocin. So we visualize touching somebody on the shoulder and taking all the positive energy of that person. And then we put the two fingers on the forehead and we go making the sound 
two fingers on the shoulder of someone and then <laughs> two fingers on your throat and you go and say <laughs> Mickey, I can't hear you. <laughs> that comes next then you do it again you put the two fingers on the shoulder and then next you put the two fingers on your chest and you go ha <laughs> 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 next you do it again I, the two i'm thinking of all these people watching at home right now <laughs> and their spouses or their kids that they've been homeschooling are going he or she has lost it <laughs> And I'm, I'm, I'm imagining my husband in the sleeping room and my kids going like, what did we do? <laughs> and then the next one, you put the two fingers on the shoulders and then you put a, two fingers on your belly button. And you oh, you scared me there, Rock. You scared me. <laughs> <laughs> and you think you're like Santa Claus and you go, ho, 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 ho. Then once more, <laughs> and then you put them just three fingers below your belly button, not much more down, just below your belly button, and you go. You're scaring me. Big, you really owe him big. <laughs> then how do you know? Yeah, we, we were done. He 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 ha ha hu he he ha ho hu. You do it all together, very quick. <laughs> oh my gosh! With that, we're gonna call it a night. Rosaria, thank you. Mickey, thank you. John and Meredith, thank you for. Uh, we all we all actually look better. Mickey's just worrying where this tape is going to, where this video is going to be, <laughs> and whether or not we'll be able to blackmail him at some point in the in the future. So, thank you all so much. Thank all of you for everything you've done. I am so proud of our our network and 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 the leaders that you all uh, have been so far. I, uh, I I said this earlier. I didn't say it during our, our conversation tonight, but I do believe we're kind of a, on a. You know, this is a, a marathon, not a sprint. And in the in the in the first weeks of this, we had an adrenaline rush. Uh, that has got us to this point. And uh, as our, our president uh, or our leaders have said in all the countries that we're, we're from, uh, we're going into the, the, uh, uh, the probably the weeks that were, might be the, maybe the toughest. And so uh, the exercises, whether it be the laughter yoga or the insight uh, that, uh, that Mickey and Rosario have shared with you, please, please put those to, uh, to good use. Uh, stay positive, stay safe, stay strong, and, uh, and stay healthy. And we're going to do this again in uh, in two weeks, and I guarantee you we've got interesting guests then too. Thank you all. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.